across the world for sports, for instance. Now, at that time, sports was something that children, uh, school children were into. Adults became adults and got onto adult things. So it was unimaginable at the time that people could actually believe that uh, uh, there's even a need for adult sports and entertainment, never mind having a, arenas built across the world. But he said, we can do this. And you know, voiced basically a sports culture for the males. Using a tribal system, they're all tribal to an extent. That's why we even bother to vote for a tribal leader. Uh, it's well understood. That's why we're supplied with these leaders. And because the, the average man was to become more disengaged from his own destiny as the expert class arose, it was decided that, that the males would get their, their, their outlet, basically, um, being gradually becoming helpless as, as males through sports. Therefore, they'd have a tribal team they could identify with, uh, they could um, cheer them on as they were winning, and their own personal lives, they were getting nowhere. They were getting disenfranchised, in a sense, as experts took over um, decision-making for them in all kinds of fields. So this was psychology at use, uh, planned before they even implemented the sports. That's why they pay athletes these fantastic salaries. I was listening to the radio the other day. They just contracted to pay one, one player on one team $6 million a year. Can you believe this? And why is that? It's the Roman circus. What does the emperor do when the people become restive? And when the people are asking questions and when the people don't like the policies of the emperor? He sends them to the circus. He creates a circus. He builds a giant coliseum. And he begins to throw the Christians to the lions. And he has great chariot races and football games and basketball games, all to keep the idiots preoccupied with things that don't mean anything in the scheme of the entire world so that they don't have the time to learn what the truth is, so they don't ever get smart enough to learn how they're being manipulated, so they don't ever question the emperor. That's why they pay a player on a football team or a baseball team a million or two million or three million dollars a year. It is the Roman circus. I know men who don't know anything in the world except who plays third base for the Mets. And they think that's a great accomplishment. And they meet and pat each other on the back and bond and go have cocktails and talk about what this guy that plays third base for the Mets did in last night's game. It's sad. It's really sad. Uh, when radio came along, of course, they, they, they used that to the maximum. Uh, sports for the men, um, soaps basically for the women, and then in came television, as I say, with its alpha state, its hypnotic state, and Sure enough, around the 1960s, really, 50s and 60s, it took off. It really, really took off. Uh, and men became glued on Saturday nights to the sports shows. A culture industry, which is called by its own the culture industry. The Soviet Union had a department called the culture industry. Their actors and directors were called the cultural leaders. Leaders. Because they would... Like a computer, people are like computers. Um, all you have to do is keep giving them new updates every so often, and you can change an entire country or a nation or a block of nations who are all getting the same uploads, upgrades at the same time along certain paths. Today we call it political correctness. Most people want to belong to their peer group. They want to be the same as everyone else when it comes to opinions. In fact, they judge their own personal sanity by bouncing ideas off their, their neighbors and friends who will answer back and agree on these same topics in kind. It doesn't matter if the topics or, the, or what you're given are facts or, or utter nonsense, as long as everyone agrees at the same time, you'll say, well, I'm sane, and your friends will all agree because they've had the same information given to them. <laughs> If it's on TV and a famous face uh, says something, then it must be true. He doesn't have to show you facts or anything else. You'd, 
They've been brought up with these faces. That's why they keep these guys on television into their 70s and 80s. You've grown up with this father figure who's on television every night at 6 o'clock uh, in your house, in your room, staring right at you. Uh, and he's a father figure. Would he tell you a lie? That, that, so you naturally never suspect him. And the same man will lead you through new topics. He'll, he'll introduce experts on the topics that have a little summary at the end of every talk, and you are now left with the conclusion as, that's presented to you. As you. You don't arrive at it, it's given to you, and it's good enough for you. We're programmed today uh, perfectly just like machines. We tie this, this in with the Brzezinski. Brzezinski said in two ages, now this guy was way up with the NSA. He was a, he's a master geopolitician. Uh, politician. He works, in, he admits he works in, in 20, 50 year periods to do with geopolitics in other countries. But he said himself, the public will shortly be unable to think or reason for themselves. It was meaning by the form that, that of, of uh, information that was given to them.